Hey guys, it's me, Mr. 250, and welcome back to Higurashi. Last time we were here, Akasaka, Akasa, yeah, Akasaka, was in the hospital and spent a long time looking for a phone that did him no good. Although we got to go to the festival, and presumably he's going to wake up to finding out that the uh, the damn construction guy is dead. It's kind of like history at this point, so I guess we'll see. And I think this is the last part of this chapter as well. Because I got an achievement last time about have re having read all the the, uh, the tips in this chapter, so I'm thinking it, but I'm not sure. I guess we'll find out, though. Let's continue. Papa? Uh, oh. You back home now? That long, terrible past behind you? Sorry, I was just thinking about the horrible dream I had. Miyuki was sitting next to me. I quickly patted her head after hearing her say that. I must have had a bad dream while sleeping in the cabin. I was sweating profusely. Yeah. It's just the it's just the past. Don't worry about it. <laughs> I tried to wipe away the sweat while answering, and looked around for a handkerchief or towel. And then a cold drop ran down my forehead. Miyuki turned to me and smiled, then wiped my face with the towel she received to take off. Arigato, Miyuki. Thanks to her, I was finally able to shake off my slumber, so I got up from the aisle seat and looked out the window. I wrapped my arms around Miyuki in the window seat and listened to the noise as the land and sea blew past us before our eyes. And then, the plane gently turned before entering the airport runway. Ah, we did see the scene at the beginning, didn't we? Arriving at the lobby, I glanced around, looking for Oishi, and was met with a familiar gruff voice calling out to me. <laughs> it feels like it was just yesterday. Oishi clapped his hand down on my shoulder, celebrating our reunion. I know you haven't changed clothes of it. Oishi <laughs> had retired and moved to Sapporo, and of all things had started taking ballroom dancing lessons. He had apparently gotten really into it, and had decided to spend the rest of his new life devoted to that hobby. He was aiming to get his instructor's qualifications before he hit 80, and live out his old age dandily. Oh, Segoi does. No, I guess not. Oishi suddenly turned his attention to Miyuki, who was standing idly next to me. He bent down on his knee to look in her, to look her in the face. However, my daughter was frightened and hid behind my back. As you should be. She was staring at Oishi with a dubious expression, 
while tugging at the hem of my shirt. She's usually not this shy. I wonder what's wrong. Okay. See, I'm not good with uh, with years. I guess I could have figured that out if I paid attention to what year it was, but... It does give you a good idea what time period we're in. Boy, she gently stroked Miyuki's head and smiled as though she were his own grandchild. After finally seeing that, Miyuki smiled in relief. Shortly afterwards, Miyuki told me that she was just doing what I had told her to do. Be careful around strangers. Boy, she overheard that and let out a hearty ha 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 ha, shaking his body while laughing and walking. I let myself into Oishi's car, and we headed out towards the Hot Spring Inn. See, that's the other thing you shouldn't do, is get into strangers' cars. I'd originally intended to crash at Oishi's place, but Oishi was quite obstinate that his home wasn't suitable for that, so it came to this. At the inn, we relaxed while soaking in the hot springs, then ate a delicious feast until we were full. Miyuki had a little of the Mongolian barbecue and was delighted with it. After our bellies were swollen, Miyuki grew sleepy and went off to bed. Then Oishi and I reminisced about the time we played Mahong together in Hinamizawa. It seemed that to celebrate our reunion, Oishi had looked for people who could play, but unable to find a suitable candidate, we had to give up on putting together a table. As we drank together, we excitedly recounted our exploits during the final manhunt. No, but you're not going to believe what happened next. Oh man. Alternate outfit? Yeah! ガイガイか遠方でほとぼりを冷ましてるんじゃないかと思いますね。大石さんは確か犯人の銃の一丁を奪いましたよね。あれからは。海外の軍用拳銃でした。関西系の暴力団組織が大量に密輸したうちの一
However, all he said was that it was something he couldn't talk about over the phone and that I should come to the station as soon as possible. Uh-oh. This is bad. At the time, I could only think that he must have been really annoyed. Come on, give me some, like, spooky music. But when I arrived at the station, he said this. Oh, an accident? Having no idea what happened, I borrowed the phone to contact the hospital Yuki was staying at. After being given the runaround several times, I was finally able to talk to someone in charge. And after mincing words for quite some time, they told me. Oh, that's a little different than an accident. You know, you, you forgot the died part. The world became a blur as I sat there dumbfounded. Yuki's death was unbelievably abrupt. Unbelievably sudden. I could have understood if there was some kind of problem during the birth. But Yuki's death wasn't anything like that. On the stairs on the way up to the roof, she just happened to slip and fall. And she just happened to fall in an unfortunate place at an unfortunate angle. That was it. Wanting to blame Yuki's death on somebody, I began to think that it was an act of revenge by the Defense Alliance. That they killed my wife and made it look like an accident. What I learned when I flew back to Tokyo, however, was much more cruel than that. Yuki had a habit of going up to the roof to cool off in the evening. There was an elevator up to the seventh floor, but from there you had to take the stairs to get to the roof. Even late in her pregnancy, when the evening came, she would always head up there. Her father had always said for her not to push herself. And look where it got her! But Yuki insisted that until the time she had no choice but to stay in bed, she should be allowed to do as she wished. However, I'd never once seen Yuki go up to the roof. I'd only heard that from her father and the nurses. That was because whenever I visited her, she would spend that time with me instead. I heard the reason why Yuki went up to the roof from a nurse she had become friendly with. She had said that her husband was away on business a lot of the time, and that whenever he called, she was able to cheer him up and give him courage. But when he didn't call, she couldn't do that. Her husband might put on a show of bravado, but in reality he grew lonesome pathetically fast. She was probably just the same. Whenever he left for business, not clear when he'd be back, she felt very lonely. Whenever she cheered him up, she was actually cheering herself up as well. That's why, whenever he went far away for an important job, on the evenings he didn't call, at the very least she felt that standing underneath the same sky, her feelings would reach him. At that moment, I remember the words that girl had told me that it was best that I go back to Tokyo right away. Otherwise, there would be something I'd regret horribly. Yes, that's it. Because I was away in business that day, Yuki had headed up to the roof. Had I known that this would have been the result, had I done as the girl had said and dropped everything to head back to Tokyo, I might have been with Yuki on the day she died. If I was with her, she wouldn't have gone up to the roof. The day my wife died was on the evening of the third day of my trip. Yes, it was right before the time I had the sudden urge to hear Yuki's voice and ran around the village trying to find a phone. The girl had gone around and cut all the phone cords. If she hadn't, and I had made that call, I would have undoubtedly learned of Yuki's death at that time and collapsed in tears. Of course, even though the cords were cut, it had only put me off learning of Yuki's death by that one evening. In the end, I had learned of it the next month. Or morning, I should say. However, when I managed to put my emotions in order, I realized it was the girl's small token of consideration. 
そんな話は初めて聞きましたええ私も初めて話します<笑>偶然では超能力じゃあるまいし大石さんは教えてくれましたよねあの子はお社様という神様の生まれ変わりではないかと言われてるってねえまあ村の年寄りどもはフルデリカに神通力があると信じてるようでしたがね神通力おいしいオリジナルに言われたのは、ジョークだと思っていたので、彼は本当に知りませんが、ね、未来のことを予言してみせたり、知らないはずのことを話してみせたり、知らないはずのことを話してみせたり、千里眼だの、天の啓示だの。まあ、いろいろです。もちろん、具体的な実例は何一つありゃしないんですがね。<笑>雪絵の事故を予言してみせました。おいしい tried to laugh it off, but out of respect to my deceased wife, he kept it restrained. 現職の警視庁の敏腕捜査官が陣痛力やらたたりやらを信じるわけで。Having him say that so bluntly, I couldn't respond. Of course, I had no intention of believing such odd things. But he could only say that because he didn't know what I did. Since I met that other girl, who both was and wasn't Rika Furude, I couldn't deny the existence of any otherworldly entity. Yoshi de Naku Yokoku no Kano Semo. Motion Hite de Kimasa. Not precedence. Pre. 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 Science? How do you say that? Prescience? Pre -presci prescience? But a warning. If what that girl had said was a warning about Yuki's accident, then things became much easier to understand. Basically, the line of thinking became that it was a threat. Because I didn't go back to Tokyo, my wife was killed in a way that made it look like an accident. もちろん、暴殺の可能性も疑いました。現場検証の書類は全て目を通しましたし、私が独自に調査もしました。There weren't any witnesses to Yuki's fall. There was the possibility that someone had hidden, wanting to push Yuki down the stairs. However, the cleaning ladies frequented the roof to hang laundry, and the security cameras on each floor hadn't recorded anything out of the ordinary. There wasn't anything set up on the stairs, and I was unable to find anything suspicious. Kekkyoku, Dokuji no Kensho no Kekka demo, Yuki ega tandoku de jiko o kosta to shika, kanga era lemasen desta. Hmm. Ah, tashka ni. Daijin no mago o yukai ste, kyo hak ste no keta renchu des. Nimpu hitori o kaidan kara tsuki oto ste, shoko o no kosa nai nante. できないことじゃないのかもしれない。おいしい、expression had completely sobered up。奥さんは。連中に。殺された。when Yuki died。I thought that as well。more precisely I wanted to blame somebody。so I created the most viable scapegoat。but without any clear evidence。The violent notion faded along with the wounds in my heart. I know so you are. But I see it's my no show you go see. Kill certain. It's my no show you again see. School me to see Miss Tanoka. So no do to that. I know that to start. But I see a course of it. Oh, she smiled slightly in disbelief. Is he poured more beer from his bottle? Yeah, I eat this, yo. Akasaka san no you told it. Full de Rikawa, Mirai ga wakaru yogen shada to shimas. Nara, naze ano daisai gai ga yuchi dekinagatan desu. 
あんな恐ろしい合災害が起こると知っててどうして黙っていたんですほんの数時間前でもいい。OK、so this is still the same future or timeline, so to speak, where OK。Because someone had mentioned、um, that one interview that was found about.、Uh, oh, why can't I remember his name? About Keiichi having survived the, the big gas catastrophe or whatever that ended up killing everybody, and only he survived. Someone was saying that apparently the person looking for it would have been. Uh, Akisaka here, and it appears like that's still the same the same story that's happening, at least from what I can tell right here. Just gives me a better idea of where we're at. <laughs> it was near the end of June 1983. Volcanic gases from the Onigafuchi swamp erupted and hit the village in the middle of the night. It was an unprecedented disaster where the whole populace was wiped out. It caused a wave of panic about volcanic gas across the country, causing people to overreact over any reports of odd smells. I hadn't heard of the blockade on the Hinuizawa area being lifted, so it should still be cordoned off. それは It was my turn to be lost for a response. まあでも、親代様の生まれ変わりであるフルデリカが殺されたので、村が親代様の怒りに触れて、それで沼から正気が湧き出して、村を死滅させたんじゃないか。Sounds really loud. Hold on. No, my settings are still there. Let's turn it down a teensy bit more. So, you Hanashina Tashikani, Hinamiza K no Sezon Stanning and Tachino either day. Makoto Shiakani Sase Karate Tanoma, did it this name? Oisa, is Ima Koro Saretato Saimasta. Oh, hm, ma Akasaka Saninara. When I saw the news about the gas disaster, I remembered that girl. I then found her name in the list of victims. That's why, at the time, I thought her own death she had predicted was due to the gas. It was after that I learned from the tabloids of the series of mysterious deaths in Hinuizawa during the first five years leading up to the disaster. That became known as the Curse of Oya Shirosama. And that string of mysterious deaths lined up exactly with what the girl had predicted. So, I'd,、uh, so I had always thought to ask Oishi about it, as he had been involved in the investigation. That's right. That was the reason for our reunion. But right now, Oishi had said Rika Furude didn't die in the disaster, but was killed? 最後の年のたたりについて聞かせてもらってもいいですかうーん私退職したとはいえ守秘義務がありますよ<笑>中井さんすみませんお冷やねちょっとグレードの高い地酒はありませんか種類はお任せしますな<笑>いやいやそういうつもりで言ったんじゃないんだけどな。おいしい、ラッド、ラッド、ラッド、ラッド、ラッド、ラッド、ラッド、ラッド、ラッド、ラッド、ラッド、ラッド、ラッド、ラッド、ラッド、ラッド、ラッド、ラッド、ラッド、ラッド、ラッド、ラッド、ラッド、ラッド、ラッド、ラッド、ラッ避難水地区全域が封鎖されちゃいましたからね。あの最後の年のたたりについてはほとんど捜査ができてないんですよ。何年か後に封鎖が解けたとしても村人のほとんどが死んでますし
数少ない生存者も親戚のもとなんかに散って所在がほとんどわからないですからね完全に迷宮入りです Oishi seemed to postulate to himself as he stared at the ceiling, as if trying to work out a memory from the rusty cogs in his head. And then he said in a completely sober voice, Shuganji nanga ja, gonen me no tatari ga ano dai saigai da, みたいな言い方をしてますけどね本当の五年目のたたりはちゃんと渡流しの祭りの当日にあったんですよ富武二郎っていう旅行写真家がいます、ね、彼が犠牲に美味しいジェスチュー about how the victim tore out his own throat with his fingernails as he talked That sounds awful. その富武氏の恋仲の女性が山中で焼死体にお隣の県警さんがあんまり協力的じゃなかったもんでこっちはあまりよく状況を知らないんですがね一夜にして犠牲者が二人もうーん実はね二人どころじゃ済まないんですよその翌日になんですがね私の後輩の熊谷君が捜査中に車両ごと蒸発しましてね Kumagai was a younger detective that was going to be partnered with Oishi after we first met. Tomi Takeshi no Jiken Sosa no Tame ni Mura ni Kikomi nanka ni Mate tan desu yo. Nani ka no Jiken ni Makikomare tano ka mo shire nai. Watashi to ishto datta nara Buji datta ka mo shire nai to omo to Ima demo kuyashii desu yo. Ano hi dou yu wake ka watashi Onaka o hidoku kuwashi mashite ne. 外回りは遠慮しちゃってたんですよ事件の真相に近づきすぎてと思ってますクマちゃんは善と有望な若者だったけどまだ現場経験が不足してたトラブル慣れしてなかったんですおいしいラメンテッドファクトでワズンウィズスボーディネタテイでさらに翌日ですねなあ彼のことは赤坂さんもご存知ですよねほら入江先生ですよ覚えてますあああの病院の若い先生ですねぼんやりと覚えてます彼ですねどういうわけか睡眠薬で、ね、For some reason, I don't know. 遺書の類はなし司法解剖の結果でも睡眠薬によるものと断定されました動機以外に不審な点はなし睡眠薬での死に見せかけるのはそんなに難しくないんじゃないですか他殺の可能性は独身で離婚歴もなし特定の女性と付き合っていたという話もなし少年野球チームの監督を務め村人との信仰もあり誰からも好かれる人物敵が見当たりませんねまあそれを調べるにももうあの大災害でめちゃくちゃになっちゃいましたからね今となっては彼の身辺を調べようもありませんがそれでフルで理科の死はその当日です昼ごろに神社に訪れた村の老人たちがフルで理科の死体を発見しました他殺ああ話す前にそのイカそうめんを食べちゃっといた方がいいですよ<笑>無体な死に方おいしいなでファンリー死体は神社の境内さい銭箱の脇でした最も閉めたのは他の場所でしょうね。全裸で裸だし、足の裏は汚れてませんでしたから。愉快犯の犯行司法解剖の結果、そういった痕跡は認められませんでした。分かったのは、薬物で昏睡させられてから、あの場所へ運ばれ、It's pretty spooky right there. Better put in the spooky violent sound. 意図的に臓器を引きずり出して四方に散らしてみせました昏睡では回復は死後ではなく
ん。That girl's prediction was right on the mark. I'm pretty sure she was more detailed about the other deaths that led up to her own. For example, I think she said that the housewife that was beaten to death in the fourth year had her head split open. Then, in that case, did she know that her own death would be so terrible? There must have been some movements where she wanted to doubt the validity of her own predictions, or moments even. But as people died exactly as prophesied, as the years passed, that prophecy would only come closer to fruition. And then, facing the final year, unable to struggle against her own destiny, her all too young life was snuffed out. And in such a cruel way, knowing that her days were numbered, and unable to fight the tide of events heralding her end, my heart ached at her helplessness. <laughs> 